Hey everybody, welcome, it's Caleb. In this episode, we're going to learn the basic Linux commands. If you're completely new and you've never used Linux before, this is going to be like your crash course to actually start working with a Linux environment. Now, if you want to get a Linux environment, if you're just jumping into this series partway through, well, you can check out my previous episode in this mini series, or you can just jump into the solution, which is I used Hostinger who sponsored this series. This video was sponsored by Hostinger. Hostinger provides world-class hosting for everyone, anywhere from shared web hosting, to a virtual private server, to cloud hosting. With 24-7 chat support and competitive pricing, on top of a 99.9 .9 uptime guarantee, you can trust Hostinger to keep your site running at its best. If you're just getting started, you can go with premium shared hosting, or if you want a little bit more experience, you can go with a virtual private server. When you get to the checkout page, use the coupon code Caleb Curry for a discount. Thanks again, Hostinger, and let's get back to the video. So I have a virtual private server set up on Hostinger. You can get started with that for like $4, and that's going to give you a really simple way to connect to the environment, as I did here. And now we have a Linux environment set up, that simple. Or if you're on Mac, you can type out most of these commands just the same and it's going to work fine. If you want to follow this tutorial exactly though, then you'll want to use the virtual private server. So the first and my favorite command of them all is clear. And I pretty much type that out to give me a fresh start anytime I don't want to look at the screen because having all those words floating around just kind of bother me sometimes. So I'm just zooming in with command plus. And because I'm in the terminal in Mac, basically you can go in, oh, no, don't close, gosh. Sorry, sensitivity of my mouse is way too high. Go, you can go to preferences and you can choose different themes. So I created this custom theme, Caleb, but you can go ahead and create a new one just to make it however you like. I just like the neon green on dark green look. So yours probably looks like trash, but let me know your favorite colors and themes below or if there's any good themes out there, maybe you can download, I don't know. So then the next one is PWD, and this will tell you your path. So this is the folder we're in. So you can imagine the terminal as doing anything you would do in an explorer, but it's all through text. So if we were to open our files, our finder, you know, this is my desktop full of a bunch of junk. Well, you could access the same folder through the terminal if you wanted. So anything you do inside of a finder window, you want to become familiar with doing that in just the terminal. And it's probably best to become very familiar with these commands and not use a GUI whenever possible. Because if you're stuck on using a GUI, a graphical user interface, then if you're ever SSHing into the server, you're gonna be limited. So a big, big example of this, which we're gonna talk about probably in the next video, is editing text files. I'm assuming 50% or more of you guys watching this episode do not know how to edit a text file in the terminal. Now, in your defense, and just so you guys know, I'm not good at it either. I have like this much experience with Vim. Um, if you want to know all the juicy details of how to get started with Vim, in my C programming series, that's what we used at the start of it. We eventually transitioned to Visual Studio Code. But at the beginning, we did everything from the command line and gave like a complete introduction to complete beginners for Linux. So that's another good option if you need a few more resources. But if you're connecting to a server remotely and you need to change some file or configuration, you can't just go open the file in Visual Studio Code and change it. So you need to learn how to use VI, Vim, or some other console-based text editor. So as I mentioned, GUI is the graphical user interface. You'll often hear CLI to refer to the command line interface. So any software that's written for the, for the command line is known as a CLI. All right, so between these commands, I'm going to type clear. So that way, if I screw anything up, I can just get a clean state every time. So that one is PWD. You should know that one just to know where you're at. The next one is if you want to change where you're at, you type CD. So typing CD, that's going to set our path to this right here. But you can change it to somewhere else by saying first LS to list the file directories. So when you type LS and nothing shows up, well, that means there's nothing in that directory. However, you can look a little bit closer by saying LS dash LA and 
now we get a little bit extra information. This dash LA is going to list out all the files, including hidden files and this dot and double dot. So the dot refers to the current directory and then the double dot refers to the parent directory. Directory is just another name for folder. So basically if we wanted to go up a directory, we would say CD dot dot hit enter. And now our path is just the forward slash. And when we list the files on now, you can see everything on our system. So when you refer to some file, you can use an absolute path starting with just that forward slash. So if you wanted to refer to, let's say this screen RC file, you could refer to it as forward slash root forward slash and then dot screen RC. So we'll just keep that in mind as we're referring to stuff. You can always start from the very beginning of your file system and travel to that file. Alternatively, you can refer to something in the current directory. So what I wanna do is I wanna change directories back to the root that we were in. So we'll say CD root, hit enter. And now you can see our path is forward slash root. So if I wanted to refer to a file relative to here, well, I could just say something like cd.cache and then refer to some file there. I don't have to always start from the very beginning. I can start in the current directory by leaving off that forward slash at the beginning. All right, so let's delete this. And the next important file you should know about is touch. So touch will create something. So I could say touch test one, and let's say touch test two. So this will create two files. One's called test one, and the other one's test two. Now, if you're coming from Windows, you might be like, mm, what kind of files are these? Like, are these text files, images? Well, file extensions don't really matter on Linux. They're basically just used to tell programs how to interpret something, but these are text files essentially. So you can think of them as test1.txt and test2.txt, but those file extensions are not required. But now when we list out our files, we get test1 and test2, and these ones are not hidden files. You can tell if a file is a hidden file because it starts with a dot. So these are all hidden files or directories. Test1 and Test2 are not hidden files, which is why they show up And when we say ls by itself. Unlike these ones up here, we were required to type in dash la to list out everything. Well, when we just type ls, it's going to by default show us all of the non-hidden files. If we created a hidden file, John Cena, and then we said ls, that's not going to show up. Now, before we get into editing text files, I just want to talk about a simple way to actually put something in these text files, and that is to direct an output to the file. So, for example, we can say echo hello world, and then use the greater than sign, and we'll just say test one. Hit enter, and to confirm that that string hello world actually went into that file, what we can do is use the command less. So less will give you a preview of what is in a file. So we can say less test one. Hit enter and it says hello world and that's it. So it worked. That's how you can put information into the file. Then to get out of that, just hit Q and it should bring you back to this page. So let's clear the screen. So we talked about how to create a file. How do we create a directory? or a folder. It's mkdir, and then you just give that a name such as images. And now when we list everything, we get images in purple, and then two files, test one and test two. You can also put directories inside of directories, so we could add a directory inside of images, and you can do that by changing into the images folder. I'm using folder directory interchangeably, try not to I'll try not to be confusing. I'll try to stick to directory, but if that happens, that's why. Uh, just I'm used to saying folders all the time. So once you're in images, you can then make another directory such as vacation. And now when we list the files inside here, we have that vacation 
directory. But you don't always have to go to the directory you're trying to do stuff in. So as an example, if I change directory to the parent by using the double dots as we learned, well, if we check our path, we're currently in root and I should be able to make a directory inside of images, comma, vacation. And let's just say we had some special vacation. Um, what's a fun place to visit? Uh, the dentist. So we can make that directory there and that does not change our path. We're still in root, but we should be able to change to that directory by saying images tab, vacation tab, and then dentist. And there we go. Now that is our path. So don't always feel like you have to go to a certain directory, do something, and then go to a different directory and do something. You can often do everything just from one directory. The point of changing the directory, like why, why would you use CD if you can just do it from anywhere, is purely a convenience thing if you want to refer to the current directory and work relative from that directory. So it's more simple. Simpler. Yes. If you ever want to get back to the start, well, you can say CD, and that is going to take you back to your home directory. So forward slash root in this case is known as the home directory. It's essentially like uh, your user folder. It's kind of like this folder on Mac, Caleb Curry, where I have all of my junk. There is another way to refer to this home directory, and that is to use a tilde. So this is a tilde, it's right above the tab character. And that is how you can refer to the home directory in any expression. So for example, we could say something like CD tilde slash images vacation dentist. And that works just the same. So in other words, let me clear this off. CD tilde is going to get you to this home directory and CD by itself is also going to get there. So you're going to probably see both of those in your time with Linux. But if you need to be explicit and refer to the home directory, then you can just use that tilde. Now the next important command that you should learn is RM, which is used to remove stuff. So if we say LS, let's go ahead and RM test two, and it'll delete that. Now, when we say ls, that file is gone. Now, to remove a directory, I'll show you what happens. rm images. Cannot remove images is a directory. So, to fix this, and I'm going to give you a warning about this. This is very dangerous. rm hyphen r images. This is going to remove that directory and everything in it, but there's no warning. It doesn't put it in the recycling bin, it's gone. So if you want to properly remove directories, then you might want to look up some better ways to do that. But for the sake of this video, I'm probably just gonna do rm-r. So that is your introduction to Linux commands. Hopefully this is helpful. Stay tuned for the next video as we continue our discussion on Linux and let me know what you want to learn more about. Stay tuned, I'll see you then. Be sure to subscribe and shout out to Hostinger for sponsoring this series. Definitely appreciate it. You provided me this sweet virtual private server.